What's up, my internet friends? It's another Wednesday, another walk and talk. Thank you for tuning in this week, and I guess you're judging by the intro, this is gonna be a weather disaster walk and talk. Well, this is why. It's not really raining, but, um, uh, like that for the last 30 minutes and it's not dying down it's just a extremely windy day so much like other times where this happens uh, I'll be doing the walk and talk inside stupid wind okay like I said thank you guys for tuning in this week uh, not much as far as updates go so we're just gonna go straight into your answers for last week's question last week's question was who is your best friend and why sort of a way to give you guys a shout out to those that really mean a lot to you and I thank so much of you for all of your responses um, all right Jess gave me an awesome answer in Facebook because the comments on YouTube were too short for her to write it all out the steel roses also gave a really good response but the only reason I'm not putting them in is because they're already a permanent tenant in the box of awesome so there you go but they gave some awesome awesome uh, answers so I'm well I might post them up anyways but the people that are contenders for the next uh, tenant in the box of awesome for seven days is Luigi's Mafia and Chocolate Lab 006 they should have popped up here somewhere in front of me okay but one of them will become the next tenant in the box of awesome the reason I chose theirs is because uh, Chocolate Lab's friendship is very similar to my friendship with a lot of my friends Luigi's Mafia is because his friends have been together for such a long time and there's nothing like friends that no matter what great distance or if you even stop talking for a little while once you guys you know get back in touch it's like you know you never left and that's the sign of a of a really good friend so we'll see which one of you becomes the new tenant in the box of awesome so now we'll go ahead and move on to the questions this week ah! the first question comes from my friend Danny and she asked me this in chat if you and your best friends were in a fighting game what would your signature moves be and why and that's a pretty good question um, okay we'll start with me if I were in a fighting game I think one of my signature moves would be duplication where all of a sudden I just spawn a bunch of clones and then we'd all beat them up or throw them around and then they would revert back to into me or they'd run off or something like that that would be probably be my signature move that or teleportation like I teleport from one side of the screen to the other that would be probably my signature move Danny's would probably be bunny hop <laughs> I don't know she just pounce on him or hump to death because I mean we all know that bunnies hump a lot so <laughs> my friend kitty of course kitty claws she, my friend kitty is like x23 from Marvel versus Capcom so her signature move would probably be the same thing she's got claws man uh, <laughs> DC's the DC's they probably like spawn a car and run over him. That'd probably be it. Like his car would show up, he'd get in and just drive over the other guy. Okay, yeah, he's bringing a weapon in, but you know, it's a fighting game. Things happen and look at Mortal Kombat. Luigi's Mafia would probably pull out a guitar and do some shredding and then the sound wave would probably hurt the opponent. That would be his signature move. Joe would probably just do a, like a brutality kind of thing. Just put the beat down and then finish off with a bottle of Guinness over the head. I don't know. <laughs> was that wrong? Was that, was that too, was that too much? I'm sorry, Joe. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, Jess, Alyssa Scott. Y you guys are too sweet. I can't I can't really think of anything. Unless it's like uh, Sonya Blades, like kiss a death thing where you blow a kiss and then they burst into flames or something. Maybe that, maybe that. Uh, the Steel Roses, um, what uh, what is that character? She, she fights with rose petals or whatever. And she'd probably like, she'd probably bring up a rose and then like do something and then the petals fly off and then they all fly towards the opponent and hurt him. That'd probably be hers. Yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. Those are pretty much the most, most of the people that I can think of right now for signature moves. But thank you, Danny, for the, uh, for the question and uh, we shall move on to the next one and it comes from Benny Nen and he asked if you were stranded on a deserted island with no means of immediate escape which five people whether you know them or not would you want to have with you and why okay so first person would probably have to be one of my friends uh, any one of my friends uh, if I had to pick probably would be Danny because she is my best friend I know we just get along so well I don't ever see us having any arguments or whatever so probably her Kevin Smith because I just love to talk to that man all day that guy I don't know not 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 the guy from man versus wild but I want a survivalist I don't know any survivalist would be the third person I want fourth person would probably be okay I'll make the fourth person that Phelps guy from the Westboro Baptist Church and I, I know you're probably thinking right why of all people would you want that guy there he's ah. 
Well, here's my way of thinking. If he's on a deserted island and not preaching this BS to all these people, I'd be doing people a favor, I think. And I'm not saying I'd want him on the island and I'd want to talk to him. I'd want him on the island and just isolate him to this other part of the island, probably where there's dinosaurs like Isla whatever from Jurassic Park, you know? <laughs> I'd probably just leave him there to fend for himself. But okay, that's who would be my fourth. My fifth would probably be... Corey Williams, SMP Films. I think he would make it very interesting on the island. If not talking to Kevin Smith, I could do stuff with uh, Corey. So yeah, those would be my five people. And sorry for the long answer. So let's go ahead and get to the next question before I go on to another tangent. And I just realized I'm wearing his shirt. Woo! But okay, the next question comes from the Steel Roses and she asked, with all the technology that is constantly increasing in demand, do you think that people are rearing away from more major discoveries like outer space? And do you believe man actually landed on the moon? Good questions. Okay, uh, first of all, no, I don't believe that we're ever going to start rearing away from any greater discoveries because as long as there is at least one guy, one scientist, whose goals and dreams is to reach beyond our, our boundaries and stuff, we're always going to have major discoveries or people wanting major discoveries. And not to mention that with the high demand of technology, I'm pretty sure NASA is way more advanced than what the public has in their hands. I'm pretty sure they have things that we haven't even heard of yet and they're using it on a regular basis. I'm pretty sure. So no, I don't think it's going to cease us from... Uh, from making major discoveries because society just wants a little gadget in their hands. Society just wants, you know, something to, to hold on to and, and play with and go, ooh, shiny, you know? But no, it's not gonna stop scientists and everything from making major discoveries. I mean, I don't think. But when it comes to, do I believe that we landed on the moon? I wanna say, yeah, I, I wanna say, yes, I do believe it. And I have heard all the different arguments from this side and that side stating it was all done on a sound stage and the other side that says, oh, we totally did. And with the technology that we have th these days, I mean, I don't see why we wouldn't have. Maybe we didn't do it way back when we first said that we did, with Apollo 11, was it? Maybe we didn't land it then. You never know. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But, with all the technology we have now, and the space program and everything, I think it's, it'd be a shame if we didn't land on the moon at this point. And the only other thing that makes me want to say that we did land on the moon is, to me, I want to believe that the human race, not just America or whoever, the space race, whatever, human beings, our, our race, did something amazing. We reached another planet. And I think that that's, that, that amazes me. That astounds me. And I'd like to think that we accomplished something so great over everything else that we've done. Like, there's so much stuff going on here on planet Earth, all this negativity, and all these other things that we've created, the atom bomb, halogen collider, nuclear weapons, so many things and tools of destruction the human race has made throughout the years. If it's one thing that I want to be proud of, I want to be proud of that as people, we've reached the moon. We've, we've, we've reached another planet. Not because, oh, there's an American flag there, go America, you whatever. I mean, I'm patriotic, but I just like to think of it as we as a race, as a society, as a human, as human beings accomplish something so great. We got a human being on the moon. To me, that's fantastic. I don't care if he was uh, American or, or Japanese or Russian or whoever. We got a human being on the moon. That's awesome. So that's the way I think of it. So yeah, I, I want to believe that we, we made it there. And I'm sorry for the rant. But yeah, that's just, that's just my opinion. I, I like to think, you know, in greater pictures instead of just the little tiny, tiny ones that TV likes to throw in our faces. I like to look at the, you know, zoom out a little bit, you know? So yeah, I do believe that. So thanks, Rosie, for the question. And we move on to the uh, the next one, and it comes from All Right Jess, and she asked two questions. First one, do you have a nickname? And yeah, it's Ray. Uh, I haven't said my real name on camera yet. I don't think I will. I don't. I'm kind of proud of my name because it's unique, but at the same time, because it's unique, it's kind of funny. So I don't know. I'll I'll tell you guys one day. I just I'm not ready today. But Ray is my nickname, and I've had people call me other things before. Like uh, I've had someone nickname me Short Round once. And a, actually, it was a small group of people that called me Short Round. If you don't know who Short Round is, shame on you. He's that little Asian kid that hung around with Indiana Jones in all those movies. You call him Dr. Jones, dawg. You know, that, that thing? Yeah, they would call me Short Round. I don't know why. But, okay, but yeah, that was one of my other short-lived nicknames. But she also asked another question in case that answer or question had been asked 
before and I'm very wow with my hands today. The other question was, if you were playing hockey on the roof, how many balls would you bring? Kevin Smith reference, love the question. Thank you, Jess, and I would definitely bring more than one because who brings only one ball to a hockey game? Seriously, especially if it's on a roof. Come on. Thank you, Jess, for the uh, for the question. And I love all the Kevin Smith reference stuff that you've been saying lately. It's it's great. But we'll go ahead and move on to the next question, and it comes from Luigi's Mafia. He asked, "Would you rather go homeless for a month or live in the woods for a month with only the clothes on your back and a bottle of water?" Uh, I honestly don't see a difference. Homeless, living in the woods. I well, I can I guess living in the woods. There's shelter. You can make shelter in the woods. But if you are homeless, I guess well, there's underpasses, cardboard boxes. You know, I'd probably choose living in the woods because I, I kind of like the woods. I kind of like being out there. I don't want to be out underneath an overpass or anything. I'd rather be in the woods. At least in the woods, I could probably find things that I can use to survive, like hunt and stuff. I don't know. But I, I just feel I have a, a better chance of surviving in the woods than I do out as a homeless person, you know, in a city or something. So yeah, I'd probably live a month in the woods. That's what I would do. So thank you, Luigi's Mafia or Louis. For the question and we will go to the next one and it comes from chocolate lab 006 and she asked do you miss the time when we didn't have all this technology but that is a very excellent question and yes i do sort of miss those times even though yes i love all the technology i love being able to have friends anywhere in the world and be able to talk to them and chat with them and, and play games with them as soon as playstation network comes back yeah i mean i, I love all of that but at the same time like even this day and age mo some people would mail letters and they would still type type it on the computer and print it out and then put it in an envelope and mail it. And to me, that's just so impersonal. Uh, when I mail a letter, like I mailed that stuff to Caters17 and Corey and Mr. Safety, and I also sent those germs to some of you guys, uh, the DCs, Luigi's Mafia, Luke from Ike Productions, and Alyssa Scott. I, I wrote the letters that I mailed with those germs and stuff because uh, I, I want it to mean something. I don't want to just type something out. I think that's impersonal. Like these days, I, I, I've, I've come across some kids these days that haven't even heard what a super soaker is. And I, I just feel bad when I heard that because when I was a kid, yeah, we had the Super Nintendo. Even though I had game consoles and a what was considered advanced technology back then as far as gaming and you know keeping kids occupied nothing really got in the way of me wanting to go outside and play with my friends like even if it was just riding bikes in a circle around our parking lot because we lived in an apartment complex even if it was just riding bikes in a circle we'd find fun out of it even if it was throwing stones at a dumpster or maybe trying to play basketball since we were kids or going on the swing set nearby or just walking through the woods you know we would go out and do all of that stuff and uh, we would find fun out of anything we'd b find a stick and dig a hole and you know but these days i go outside and you hardly see any kids i don't know about every other neighborhood but in in my neighborhood i hardly see any kids at all like there's no footballs and bicycles and rollerblades and stuff and hula hoops sprawled out on the front lawn but back when i was a kid up in newport new hampshire they were everywhere and i kind of miss that i kind of miss doing that and not i don't mean just missing it as a kid i just sort of as an adult now i sort of miss seeing that that these kids these days are missing out on so much because they're doing this clifford stoll even said it in a lecture one of ted talks that kids these days are really good exceptionally good at texting and having a lot of good on screen time when it comes to computers and technology but sad that they've never once gone bowling with friends. Maybe bowling online, but they've never once gone bowling with friends, or they've never once played pool with friends. And that's the sad thing, and I do sort of miss that. I'm, and I know I'm a hypocrite because I'm the same way now. I'm stuck on my laptop, I'm stuck on my phone no matter where I go. I try to go out and do stuff like go to Guitar Center, just walk around the mall. I try to get out there because I don't want to be stuck and confined and things like that. That's why I like doing the walk and talks, even though this walk and talk we're stuck inside. But if there's anything I could tell any everybody, especially the younger generation now, if you're in high school or about to get into high school right now, enjoy being a teen and don't enjoy it by texting a lot. Don't enjoy it by looking stuff up on online or, or you know things like that. Enjoy it by going out. Have fun with your friends. Even create a little mischief. Don't break any laws, but play some pranks. I don't know. Just go have fun. It's a time in your life where you're supposed to be doing that because trust me, once you're in college or after college and you're in the real world, it's going to be harder and harder to find time to really do those things on your own time, especially if you got your own place and you're trying to come up in the world. You, trust me, enjoy being young and do so by going outside and having experiences and having fun with friends. That's the best Best advice that I could tell you because there's a lot of kids these days that, that are really losing that because 
instead of having their favorite toy be a bicycle or a frisbee, it's a controller. And I think that's kind of wrong. So yeah, I do miss those times. And I'm sorry again for the long answer. But thank you very much, uh, Chocolate Lab, for the question. I still might turn that into a podcast, but I think I've pretty much said all I need to say about it now. We'll see. I don't know. But thank you very much for the question. And we move on to the last one, which is a very intriguing scenario question, and it comes from the Mystery Gamer, and I think this is pretty fitting coming from him. I gotta read this because it's really, really long, but it's a scenario question, and there's four parts, and he says, depending on how I answer, we'll determine what's gonna happen in the next four parts. So this is gonna be very interesting, so you might, you guys might wanna stick around for this. And it starts out, you're walking out of Walmart, and, an, and a man who looks ill walks up to you. You ask him what's wrong, and he stabs you with a needle and pushes you into a van. You wake up in a room, the door is wood and locked, the window is high up, and from it you can see the Kremlin. And by Kremlin, I'm assuming that is that fortified place in Russia. If I'm wrong, correct me, but I'm thinking that's what he says. And if I saw that, I'd immediately flip out because I'm like, wow, I was passed out, traveled to another continent, and now I'm stuck in this room. But let me continue. On the table, because there's a table in the room, on the table is a phone with enough credits for one call, a loaf of bread, and a knife. Suddenly, you hear footsteps from behind the door and then see light. What do you do? Uh, I'm assuming I see light coming from under the door. So my immediate thing is I would think, try to figure out, okay, I at least know where I am, if that's the Kremlin outside, not good. <laughs> and I know I have a weapon. I don't know what to deal with the cell phone, I don't know what's gonna happen. So I would probably grab the knife, press myself up against the wall where the, the door is, and just wait for the guy, or whoever's coming, to come through. What I would try to do is not really attack them or kill them because I don't know why I'm here. For all I know, maybe I won some fantabulous prize and they low budget on the hotel stay. I don't know. But yeah, I wait for the person to come in and then once they come in, I get the jump on them, push them up against the wall, hold the knife in the back of their head, first gum, see if they have a weapon, and then ask them what I'm doing there. That's what I would do. And I don't want to get too far into that because I really want to know what the other scenario questions are going to be. So yeah, that's as far as I'm going to go. So uh, stay tuned uh, next week and we'll see what the next scenario is. So thank you very much for that question and we shall go ahead and finish up this walk and talk. Or not so walk and talk. Ah. Okay, the tenant for this week is da -da -da -da, Chocolate Lab 006. So congratulations, uh, you will stay another week in the Box of Awesome because I know you won last time. Because like I said guys, you, do, you can win multiple times. So congratulations Chocolate Lab. And if you would like to see yourself in the Box of Awesome for seven days, all you have to do is answer the question of the week. Uh, this week's question is, an oldie but a goodie, if you were stranded on a deserted island, What's one thing you'd want to have with you and why? So go ahead and leave your answers down in the comments section below or in a video response if you feel fancy like that. Just don't forget to ask your questions for next week's walk and talk. So thank you very much guys. And aside from that, there's really not a lot of updates uh, going on. Last week I celebrated my first year of vlogging. I completed my first year and that was on April 22nd. I did a special podcast for that. You can catch that on my blog page. It's believeinfateblog.tumblr.com and you can also catch the latest vlog where I talk about it and even show some behind the scenes of recording that podcast. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this week, you guys. Thank you all again for the questions and I want each and every one of you to know that all of you are the best friends and subscribers in the entire world. And as always, you guys, keep on vlogging.